Hello everyone. I'm here uh, again today to demonstrate a few new features I've recently activate or I've recently added to the uh, to the 3ds Max uh, Cycles plugin. Um, so let's get to it. The there's a couple main things I've added, and most of them are visible here in the Render Options panel. I've added the uh, Film section where you can set transparent sky. I'll be adding more options there in the future. That just sets whether your sky is uh, full alpha or not. And then uh, performance where you can set the size you want for rendering your tiles. I actually wanted this to be 256 by 256. Um, and if you want progressive refine or not. But the more exciting thing I added this feature is up, or this, um, this release is up here where you can select your device between CPU and CUDA. Previously it was only CPU, but I've added support for all the, uh, all the same NVIDIA uh, GPUs supported by Cycles and Blender. So those will all work here and um, it gives much faster results, which I can demonstrate here quick. Uh, so before I loaded this video, before I started recording this video, the last thing I did in Max was to render this exact scene out uh, with the CPU. As you can see down here, it says rendering time 43 seconds. So now I'll render all the exact same settings with the uh, with CUDA. And uh, for reference, my GPU is a uh, A970 GPX and my CPU is a 4790. So um, here we can see the GPU, it's cruising right along, almost done now. And it's, it's finished in 11 seconds where the CPU, exact same scene, took a... Uh, took 43. So that's really nice to have in here now. Super fast. You can also take on transparent sky. I'll demonstrate quick. Um, and this is this will just set the alpha so there's a little bit in the background up here um, where the sky is visible like right there and I can switch to my alpha channel only. And now you can see all this is blocked out but the sky is the sky is still zero alpha but the solids are one. Um, other than that, the other uh, new feature I demonstrated in this scene just there was support for the cycles uh, sky. So now it's the same procedural sky, um, and you can just choose all your parameters there, or it's, it still supports solid colors like it used to. And the other exciting new sky it supports, I'll just make a, a blank thing here to demonstrate this. Uh, make a teapot. Teapots are always fun. So we go up here to environment and I can set this to if I scroll down here I can set to my cycles environment type and then pull that into my material editor and now I can control uh, what the sky is from here so the the other one this uh, this cycle sky type is the procedural one and this cycles environment is for uh, plugging in a bitmap so I can take this off here and add a bitmap I got this just a free sample HDR map. I got it from hdrmaps.com. They seem pretty cool. Uh, so I just loaded in. And the thing here that I actually forgot to do is you can't connect it like that. Um, I need to put this guy on so it will it will know that it's HDR and it will know the resolution. So I gotta set this to 5000. This is just the resolution of the texture, which is 5000 by 2500, and set it to HDR. So now that will be uh, lighting our scene. And I happen to know that it's pretty bright, so I'm going to turn down sky intensity to like 0.4. And we'll use CUDA and just do a quick, quick render of this teapot lit by, lit by the environment map. So here you'll see it hangs up a little bit. I'm preparing to render. It did not do before because it is baking out that, uh, that sky map. And here you can see the teapot is actually lit wrong because of a bug right now where teapot primitives don't light right. So if I change it to a poly and render it out again, this little nub will get lit correctly. Um, so that's environment maps. Um, they work, they use multiple important sampling uh, by default, so you'll get fairly clean renders. Um, and the other thing I added, speaking of multiple important sampling, is I added support to, um, to all shaders for uh, shader level parameters in general. So I'll, I'll grab this glossy material and apply it to my plane here. And I'll just make two spheres, two little guys. Uh, so two spheres the same size, just to show off uh, multiple important sampling as a uh, shader level parameter here. So I'll do that, add my glossy material to reflect them. Now I'll add a uh, emission. And actually, I'll need to add two of these because there's going to be two different shaders. And the thing, the new way to set this up is this cycles shader um, material node. So if you want to set any shady, shader level parameters, this is where you'll combine surface and volume once that's supported. But right now, um, it just it just all gives you this multiple important sampling checkbox so you can choose if you want it or not. 
So by default, if you don't hook it up to a cycle shader, it will have MIS, or if you can cycle, hook it up like this, this top one does not, and the bottom one does. So this top one with no MIS, I'll apply over here. This bottom one that does have MIS will go on this guy, and then we can just render that. And then that you should be able to see the, the t oh, I'm still using this guy, hold on. I don't want that, that's gonna mess up all my lighting. Environment. I choose. Oh. All right. Now I render. And you can see this one has a noisy. This one has a clean refraction. So uh, MIS works. And that is uh that's basically it for now. I'll still keep adding stuff and uh, posting updates here uh, when there's anything interesting. Uh, that's it. Thanks.